This is an update on the boat build of this 16-foot Garvey boat that I call the Wago 1. This is a Sam Devlin design stitching glue boat and uh, called the Snow Goose. The uh, Devlin designed the Snow Goose. This is 16-foot um, on the nose. <clears throat> I had originally planned on bright finishing the top decks, um, which are these, uh, which I did not. A uh, big lesson learned there, which is that the wood dye that I've been using to uh, uh, color the mahogany and also the uh, mahogany plywood, which is actually comprising the deck, um, for whatever reason just did not either fully dry or has reacted with uh, the epoxy uh, resin and uh, created a lack of adhesion in some areas of the fiberglass. And that, uh, that created some patchwork that I had to fix up and uh, really just would not look good um, as a bright finished surface. Um, that said, I painted the boat with uh, an Epiphanis, which is actually how it's pronounced, uh, an Epiphanis uh, yacht enamel, it's called, in the color called Buff. <clears throat> the hull of the boat down here is painted with a two-part uh, polyurethane paint from Interlux, uh, which is Interlux Perfection Flag Blue. Um, I left the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a white oak uh, shear clamp or gunnel that is, uh, is bright, um, that is epoxied and will be varnished. And uh, there are some other areas of the boat that obviously have bright work. There's a plate here on the, uh, on the stern of the transom. This uh, splash well cover um, was left bright. That's actually how the decking uh, would have looked if you know it had worked out. It's not the smoothest in the world, but it's nice and shiny. I have to varnish that too. And uh, obviously the bench is solid mahogany. The combing uh, and the console uh, are all made of mahogany, as well as some trim on the bow, uh, which uh, you know is is up here. And this is uh, also mahogany that. Um, as you can clearly tell, it's bright finished. The hardware on the boat is solid bronze. This is from a manufacturer uh, located in Massachusetts, which I was very happy to find at, a, at the Wooden Boat Show. Um, so I have some two chucks up here. I have an anchor cleat here in the middle, and I have some smaller cleats uh, up here um, and obviously back on the, on the stern. Um, in here, I've uh, created some little cutouts in the knees on this side, the bulkheads, uh, for some rod and oar storage. And the uh, console, which is here, and this is also made of mahogany, uh, and it is finger joined um, on the uh, top edges here. There are some blocks that have been uh, attached with thickened epoxy to the sole, um, as you can see here. And the console sits down over top, and screws will go through the uh, feet or the legs of the console to secure it to the floor, as well as another block, which has to be attached up under here. Um, at some point soon, I'll also be attaching a plate, which is this guy right here. And this plate, uh, the control for the engine will mount to this plate, and this plate will be uh, secured between where the bench is and the console is up under the combing. Um, and that will be very secure. So I'm going to use a 40 horse Evinrude E-Tech motor which will be mounted here uh, and the wiring and what have you will kind of run up and over the splash well cover probably just tuck it down behind the bench and it, the uh, wiring will be mounted up underneath the or tucked on, up underneath the decking and then rub, run up underneath the console. Mount a uh, steering wheel uh, here on the face of the console so steering wheel here and uh, control panel or control rather here with the throttle control um, and you know very simple there's one gauge also that will be mounted uh, probably to the right face of that console uh, I also on the floor used a, a product called Interdeck from Interlux which is a slip resistant uh, paint very easy application uh, you know one part paint and, uh, you know, it almost feels like, um, you know, some 220 grit or uh, maybe higher uh, sandpaper when you, when you walk on that. And obviously that is for, um, you know, when the, the sole of the boat gets wet, that helps with uh, walking around on there without slipping. Storage up underneath in the front for 
you know, life preservers and everything else. Um, they're battery powered lights. If this is ever run in a nighttime or a, a dark situation, we want a, a light. There are two battery powered lights that'll clip onto the combing. Uh, there, uh, the gas tank will go up underneath. Uh, so, underneath the seat, back here, the uh, the bench, there's space for the gas tank and battery box. Um, also, the bench is mounted on two uh, pieces of fold down hardware. So, up underneath of here, if you reach in, there's a trigger mechanism. You pull it, and the bench will fold down, um, and that just frees up, you know, 14 inches of uh, space back there if you want to do a little fishing and just sit on the, you know, sit sit back here on the decking without worrying about the bench being in your way. Up here between these two stanchions, there's one here and there's one over here, uh, another bench will go. And uh, that should pretty much do it. A Garvey style boat um, has a flat uh, front of the bow. Um, so you can see here a little bit uh, that, you know, there's the flat profile, there's the bow eye. Um, there's still some work that needs to be done up here under the shear clamp where some epoxy kind of pulled away a little bit of the paint. i got to clean that up with some sanding. But all in all, um, you know, thus far, you know, it's turned out uh, pretty nicely in my, my personal opinion. Um, you know, I'm happy with the way the paint came out. I did go to some pains to try to do some bright finishing on the top and, uh, you know, learned a lesson there about uh, not only surface preparation, but also, um, you know, being very careful to test and wait for, uh, uh, you know, a combination of, of dyes and finishing and epoxy and all that kind of good stuff. I think if I had to do it again, um, I would try to use timber um, on the top decking as opposed to ply, which uh, might be a little bit more forgiving. Um, and also just, again, you know, being very careful to test all of the components of the finishing system, including the dyes, the uh, epoxy and paint. Uh, system. But again, overall, I'm pretty happy. I got a little bit of bright work here that um, I'm pleased with in the combing, the bench, the console, uh, you know, the, the bow plating, etc. And I'm also relatively happy with the way that um, this uh, paint came out. This is a, um, it's a one part product from Epiphanis, um, the, uh, the yacht enamel. Um, one of the uh, supposed benefits of the yacht enamel, according to Epiphanis, is that it is a, a softer product when finished. So it seems to have <coughs> pardon me, very good ad, uh, adhesion, but uh, it will also take a little bit more flexing and things like that without crazing or cracking. Obviously, time will tell. And uh, there are two coats of gray primer that went down. Uh, also, it's, it's part of that system, the Epiphanis uh, yacht paint system. So two coats of um, excuse me, two coats of uh, primer, uh, two more coats of paint, and um, that kind of completes that, that portion of the build. So my next steps are a little bit of permanent installation of the combing with some screws here, attaching the plate, um, and uh, doing some other you know, little finish work. i got to clean up some areas underneath the gunnel here, uh, and then eventually get it up on the trailer. Um, I did just receive the... Um, 16 foot, uh, 1200 pound capacity trailer um, for this, and I uh, have to get it up there, adjust the bunks, all that kind of good stuff. And eventually, um, I will be taking it to a boatyard in Gloucester, Massachusetts, that will fit the engine and uh, do some prop testing and that sort of thing, and make sure that it actually floats. So, um, that is it for now.